Chapter 64 Healing of a Palsied The Nazarene's Witness of Jesus Boris himself brought along one palsied, whose hands and feet were already so withered and twisted and contracted that no mortal physician was ever likely to heal him by whatsoever means. However, Boris, after having the palsied brought over to me in a basket through the heavy throng by two carriers, spoke loudly before the people. Only God alone can help this sick one. I am one of the top physicians in all of Galilee, and the sick come to the physician Boris from Jerusalem and Bethlehem, and he helps them. But this one he cannot help. But I beg you, my holy friend Jesus, since nothing is to my knowledge and belief impossible to you, that you would once again give this person straight limbs, if it is your holy will. Say I, Friend, there are too many faithless around here, and such healing is consequently a hard thing to accomplish. But between ourselves I shall heal him at your place. Thereto, some of the people started murmuring. Oh, the carpenter's son is clever. This sick one is too much for him, whence he would rather heal him secretly, so that we should not know whether he became better or not. I heard such talk, saying to the grumblers, Oh, you mad and crazy ones! Do you know this girl at Jairus's side? Is this not his daughter, and was she not twice dead? Who gave her life back? You fools! If the Son of Man has power to call back the dead to life, shall he not have power to say unto this sick, Rise and walk? But that you may see that I indeed have such power, I say unto you, palsied person, that you get up and walk with completely healthy limbs. the same moment, a fire went through the sick one's limbs, and he felt completely strong, got up, and walked, and his limbs were totally fresh, and he had flesh and complete muscles, walking cheerfully and with grateful heart, saying after a while, of his own astonishment, This is possible only to God! Without medicines, without the laying on of hands, but bringing forth such healing solely through the word, momentarily. This has not been heard of. Lord Jesus, I confess and now fully believe that you are either God's Son or God himself in the human form. It appears to me that I should actually worship you. Say I, leave that go and make no noise over it. That which you feel in your heart, however, that preserve faithfully. A time shall come when you have need of it, and then you may pray to the Father in heaven, who alone has given such power to his Son. With these words the healed one falls silent. The people were horrified, saying, From where does this one get such wisdom, not to mention such deeds and power? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother's name Mary, and his brethren Jacob, Josie, Simon, and Judas? Matthew chapter 13, verse 55. And his sisters, are not they all with us? For heaven's sake, whence does he derive all this? Matthew chapter 13, verse 56. While they were yet conversing thus, many others vexed angry, saying, Would not this drive you mad? Our sons studied at Jerusalem, acquiring knowledge in all kinds of art and science. Besides that they attended the school of prophets in existence, fully learning the wisdom of Egypt in the interpretation of science. And this carpenter, who has demonstrably never attended any school, whom we constantly saw working with hoe and saw, shames us and our children in a way that astounds even the top rulers 
taking the usually nearly silly carpenter, all but for a god. This truly is annoying. He is all in all, speaks all languages as if a native, being a prophet of the first order working signs and things of which no god might be embarrassed. Our sons together with ourselves, who surely also learnt something in our time, are as if they could not count the fingers on their hands. Does any one of us know anything how the carpenter has acquired all this? Said others, Wherefrom should he have acquired anything? Was he not until a few months ago always at home, building houses around us and other places with his father and brethren? We never saw a trace of the unusual with him. Besides that, he was a man of few words, and when asked about anything, then he either gave no answer at all, or just a monosyllable so that one took him for mentally handicapped. And now he suddenly stands there as a man with all the world's attention. This surely is too vexing for all human reason. What has taken place with this person? We indeed know that from his earliest childhood he is supposed to have manifested some magical qualities as an almost dumb boy. Father and mother believed that something big should once become of the boy, but all the much promising faculties disappeared to such extent that not the slightest trace of them could be discovered on any occasion. Already as a boy he did not want to attend school, and as a simple carpenter was without any scientific education. I often asked the old Joseph how things were with Jesus, and whether he also was so terse at home. And the answer was, even more so than outside the house. This his brethren said so as well. If so, then where from such abilities now?